my name is Wilson Santurio. I'm <laughs> Voy a hacer las preguntas en español y en, y en inglés. Um, well, uh, we can promote innovation in, Ameri in Latin America. ¿Cómo podemos promocionar la innovación desde América Latina? Shake, you can start. Gracias, and gracias por la invitación. Um, I'm going to change to English because that's, uh, I lived in Chile for, two, for three months, 12 years ago, and so I've forgotten <laughs> most of my Spanish. But um, maybe I'd start by introducing myself and say a word about my organization before I get into it. Uh, I'm Jake Colvin, I'm based in Washington, D.C., and I'm with an organization that I run called the Global Innovation Forum. Now, the idea behind the Global Innovation Forum is to emphasize the role that outside of their company uh, to start innovating and, and investing. Uh, but today I think we're at the beginning of a, um, an even bigger change. Now, Thorsten had suggested that the, there was the democratization of technology. I would suggest that today there is the democratization of the global marketplace. Um, and so anyone can be a global entrepreneur these days. Uh, for me, the stories that, that I've come across are fascinating, and there's, there's one in particular we've gotten to know, this woman, Kavita Shukla, who's the founder and CEO of a company called Fenugreen, that makes a piece of paper that you stick in a bag of apples or broccoli and it keeps it fresh for up to four times longer. Now, you know, she, she's gone through and listed all of these technologies that she uses to operate her business and a number of them Thorsten had put up on, uh, on the screen before, but if you think about everything from UPS to Intuit to um, uh, Google Voice and mm -hmm. Skype, uh, the things that enable an entrepreneur to be global uh, and run a business I, globally. I have a question. About sure. Um, in Latin America, we are really thinking uh, big, or we are really we are thinking just local and um, about uh, our countries. Uh, uh, I think uh, we need more. Um, um, we need thinking more global. Uh. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I, no, I, I think that's that's absolutely true. I, but it, um, it, it's probably just um, sort of run of the mill to everyone in this room that you can be global from day one because almost all of you are, right? You can you can go online, you can hang a digital shingle, and all of a sudden you can reach the world, and you can use technology in order to interact with and sell to and invest with and partner with the world. Um, I think public policy tends to lag behind innovation, and all of you that are out here today. Uh, and so w I think it's really important for public policymakers to think across the suite of public policies, mm -hmm. not just startup Brazil or startup Chile, mm -hmm. but the suite of public policies that can have an impact on entrepreneurs. Everything from trade policy to effective intellectual property rights protection to internet policies and promoting an open internet to immigration and visa policies, which is something that our country, my country, does not always get right. And that in some cases, uh, inhibits the ability of startups to be global, uh, global. To, to have tra um, talent come back and forth from the United States. And so it's, it's not just the fact that you can orient a set of policies at startups through Startup Chile, but it's having a suite of public policies, and I, maybe I'll just end by giving one example. Um, in Brazil, over the, pa over the past year, there was this proposal to require that countries that, excuse me, that companies keep data on Brazilian citizens within Brazil. Uh, now, this was aimed, if you, if you read the news media, this was aimed at Google and the Googles of the world, large companies, and it was meant to affect the way that they do business in Brazil. Mm -hmm. But if this would have come into effect, the, um, 
the outcome would have been to, uh, to affect startups, small businesses, anyone that does business with or in Brazil in a way that is sort of fundamentally contrary to the idea of an open internet and to what Victoria had said earlier on. I mean, this idea of meta-connecting, it's really hard to be a meta-connector if you're inhibiting the way that LinkedIn and, and Twitter do business, which is what this, this bill would have done. So, I, I mean, I think, like I said, it's important to make sure that public policies writ large are, um, are being thought about with a view to startups. Okay. Well, uh, Renata? How are you going to promote innovation from Brazil and from Latin America? Okay, uh, introducing myself, I'm Renata Horta. I come from Minas Gerais, a, a very beautiful and great state of Brazil. Um, my company is Tropos Lab. It's part of Instituto Inovação. That's uh, perhaps the first accelerator in Brazil, founded in 2002. And so in my history at Instituto Inovação and in Tropos Lab, we had a lot of learnings about how Brazil can mm -hmm. uh, improve his uh, innovation ecosystem. Um, first of all, I would like to comment, to comment the question that you made about mm -hmm. uh, get bigger and internali internalize, uh, interna oh, sorry, Inter internationalize. <laughs> internationalize. <laughs> okay. Um, for Brazil, this is very hard because we are huge. We have a great market, and we don't speak Spanish, and as you can see, we don't speak a very good English. <laughs> <laughs> but to tell you the truth, uh, our entrepreneurs become a little bit uh, lazy considering the market that we have. So it's, uh, they almost don't need to, you see. Uh, so this is a very cultural aspect, and it's very hard because it's geography and it's culture. Um, but there, there are some very good experiences also. And I would like to, um, to, te to, te to talk about the, the, the one that I'm being part of right now, that is SEED, the project. Andre Barrens is here. He will uh, present for you uh, later. But what I admire in this initiative is that the government uh, was able not only to copy a concept, but to improve considering what we need in, in, in Minas Gerais environment. So we, we've, in this initiative, we can see uh, entrepreneurs in the government that had the courage to look for the right answers for our ecosystem. They interviewed a bunch of entrepreneurs, they interviewed VCs, they, they designed this, this program with the community. This is very rare in Brazil. And there is something else. They, they have a long-term strategy. This is something that I also miss in Brazil. Um, both in companies or government, uh, it's a long-term strategy for innovation. It's, it's rare. Uh, so this is a very good example about what we have and what we don't have. And when we, we are able to build it, how this can really change uh, the environment. In Brazil, uh, the investors prefer uh, invest to invest in um, in local uh, project or uh, in large project, uh, global project. Oh, uh, the seed, the the investors for startups, they are uh, they are kind of discovering the way they are investing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they they prefer global, but they also invest in local, and. For the startups, it's very hard to reach them. But for the other hand, we have plenty of uh, governmental money and um, other kinds of uh, funding for them. That's an mm -hmm. uh, interesting thing to, to be aware also. OK. Thanks. Lisa? Lisa? Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, um, in a st a startup Buenos Aires, yes. prefer local uh, invest in local project or global project? Um, well, first, let me introduce myself a bit no, and um, say thank you for inviting us. And I also have to mention that this is the first panel I've ever sat on in my life where there's been more women than men on the panel. So <laughs> right on to the women and the organizers of this event. Thank you. <laughs> um, so my name is Lisa Besterman, and as you can possibly tell from my accent, at least if I say coffee, I'm from New York. Um, but I currently live in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I am the founder of Startup Buenos Aires. 
Um, so Startup Buenos Aires, it is the organization that represents the startup tech and entrepreneurial community in Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are not an accelerator or an incubator, but we are more so a community, a connector, um, and um, a place where people can go to get the resources that they need. And I started Startup Buenos Aires about a year and a half ago when I had came to uh, Buenos Aires as an expat. And I had met a lot of entrepreneurs, I had met a lot of startups. And one thing I recognized was that um, despite the, the stage of development that these startups were in, um, or how many times these entrepreneurs have been entrepreneurs, there was one thing that they all had in common, which was they lacked resources. And unfortunately, at the time, Argentina didn't have any sort of an organization that provided those resources. So Startup Buenos Aires was created to be a resource hub, a way that founders can connect, a way that entrepreneurs and startups can connect to get the resources that they needed. Um, but the community really took to the idea and it evolved overnight to become the next startup hub. So what we've done is we've brought a lot of international opportunities and events um, and competitions to the city of Buenos Aires while also serving as a, as a connector within the startups of Buenos Aires. Um, so that's where we are today. Um, we are also an educator, so we provide classes and workshops to the community to improve the entrepreneurial landscape in, in Buenos Aires. Um, so one thing I have to mention in regards to the previous question, which was about um, startups fo focusing on, on local or national um, startups or going global. In Argentina, uh, startups don't have the, um, the ability to stay in Argentina. Um, so most, uh, just the, the market is just not big enough, unlike Brazil, uh, where they can focus just on Brazil. Um, so most startups and entrepreneurs have uh, a global vision. Um, and they build their startups from day one with the hopes of going global. Um, now the great thing about going global is that Spanish um, is, is a language spoken in many, many parts of the world and it's the second most um, spoken language in the US. So it's quite easy to, to get into those global markets, uh, especially the Spanish speaking ones. And um, a trend that um, we see, sorry? Yeah, question. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it's easy to find funds uh, to global uh, projects? No, easy? not in Argentina, no. Argentina is a very, very risky place. Um, in my opinion, it's one of the most innovative places um, with, with a lot of really wonderful, talented entrepreneurs and startups, but it is a very risky landscape to invest in because of the uh, economical issues, the political issues. So um, we, have, we have seen a, a big problem with, with investment in Argentina, and we hope that changes in the next couple years. But I'd say, um, going back to the original question about innovation in, in Latin America and how we can promote that, if I were to bullet point it, I would say it comes down to three, three major ways. Um, education, global initiatives, and funding. Um, with education, we can incorporate more, um, more entrepreneurial-centric and more creative-centric courses and classes in our universities to start people off young, um, to give them the tools and the resources they need to become entrepreneurs. Um, as far as global initiatives, bring more global initiatives to Latin America. More startup competitions, more startup weekends, more hackathons. And these kind of initiatives, they don't only create and promote innovation, but they also connect the community mm -hmm. and create a more globalized collaboration. Um, and last is funding. Um, we see a lot of really great companies, but we don't see them emerge because they don't have the funding that they need. So if we were to bring more investment and more funding and more attention to Latin America, I think we're going to see a lot more innovation come out of the region. And um, I think we're in the beginning to see something really great emerge from this region. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lorena, from Paraguay, you can <laughs> present. Voy a hablar en español. En español, bien. Sí. Eh, bueno, nuestro país, país pequeño, con menos de 7 millones de habitantes, es un país que tiene mucha oportunidad de abrir al mundo. Estamos en un proceso de promoción, de atracción de inversiones en nuestro país. Uh -huh. el, desde el viceministerio de micro y pequeñas empresas, donde estoy al frente desde el año pasado, en septiembre, estamos trabajando no solo en promocionar que las micro y pequeñas empresas, que son más del 95% de la actividad económica en nuestro país, promocionar a los emprendedores jóvenes, tenemos más de casi 70% de una población joven menor de 35 años. Entonces, es mucho lo que tenemos por hacer y la, podemos decir que la, la, la oportunidad que tenemos es que está todo por hacer. 
¿Cuántos de esos emprendedores se consideran startups? ¿Se identifican como startups? O Son muy poquitos. Muy pocos. muy pocos porque todos los emprendimientos que, te, que tengamos a nivel privado, todo se maneja a nivel privado, son iniciativas ya de la universidad, son iniciativas también de universidades públicas, universidades privadas, y existe un fondo que es el Consejo Nacional de Ciencias y Tecnología uh -huh. con fondos del Estado y también con préstamos internacionales que está promocionando la, in, la, la uh, investigación uh -huh. y también procesos de innovación tecnológica en empresas privadas. Claro, pero, pero más, más enfocado en la investigación que, que en la un componente, es el, un componente es la investigación, pero también es eh, procesos de innovación en empresas. Y la mayoría son procesos de innovación en tecnología. ¿Y, eso, y esos procesos se identifican como startups que tienen un potencial Tienen un regional potencial o, regional. O, o Nuestra mirada hasta, hasta el momento es nacional. Todos, los, todos los emprendimientos han sido nacionales, pero lo que queremos es potenciar eh, a que, que podamos presentar estos proyectos y que puedan ser vendidos a nivel mundial. Bien. Eh, mi pregunta dentro del le voy a hablar en español. Mi pregunta dentro del sistema eh, latinoamericano de innovación es porque la mayoría de los inversores latinoamericanos, de most of the Latin American investor, prefer eh, to invest in local eh, projects. ¿No? Esa, esa es la realidad. La mayoría de los inversores latinoamericanos prefieren invertir en proyectos locales o que son copycat, o sea, copias de otros proyectos a nivel eh, global, que han, tenido, que han tenido éxito en otros países, sobre todo Estados Unidos y, y, y Europa, y, y copian el modelo y lo implementan en, en América Latina. ¿no? Pero la mayoría de los inversores, inversores latinoamericanos no está acostumbrado a, in, a invertir en proyectos globales. Por lo tanto, el, este evento, esta conferencia, es muy importante porque junta a muchas startups latinoamericanas que probablemente no han encontrado eh, fondos eh, locales, fondos regionales, para invertir en sus proyectos, porque los inversores locales no están acostumbrados a invertir en tecnología o con, con visión global. Eso es muy importante, eh, tanto en Brasil, que están acostumbrados a invertir en el mercado local porque es grande, como en Uruguay. Yo soy de Uruguay y, y tenemos el mismo problema. Hablamos también muy mal el inglés. <risa> este, en, en parte porque no estamos acostumbrados a comunicarnos con los latinoamericanos ¿eh? y a buscar inversores latinoamericanos. ¿eh? Y esos inversores no están buscándonos a nosotros. O sea, eh, hay una diferencia acá, es un lugar donde nos encontramos las startups con los inversores que están buscando startups, no inversores que están buscando emprendimientos, como pasa en, en Paraguay, emprendimientos locales. Por eso es importante este evento eh, en ese sentido. ¿no? Ah, hay una gran diferencia entre cómo, cómo, son, cómo se comportan los inversores latinoamericanos a cómo se comportan los inversores de Canadá o de Estados Unidos. Can I can I can I comment? Yes. Uh, I was wondering if in the other countries in Latin America uh, they see the same uh, profile of the investors because mm -hmm. in Brazil I see that many many of the investors per perhaps the the most part of them comes from the financial sector. And I see that in Silicon Valley for example we have a lot of Uh, entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs that also are investors. Mm -hmm. So I believe that this changes a lot the way they view the risks and the way they, they invest in startups. So this is something that I observe in Brazil that I would like uh, to know if you <coughs> have the same condition. In Paraguay? Perdón. También nosotros sabemos que hay un una necesidad muy importante de que el inversor o el capitalista en, en, en América Latina tiene que cambiar la visión y ver como una, un potencial, una potencial inversión en proyectos tecnológicos de jóvenes. Eh, es, es, un, eh, un, es un riesgo probablemente que, que deben asumir, pero es una proyección a largo plazo. En nuestro país necesitamos que los fondos sean rotativos, que no sean fondos, becas o ayudas en forma esporádica, sino que tenga una continuidad para que asegure que más jóvenes puedan invertir y puedan eh, destinar tiempo en investigación y en desarrollar nuevos productos. Muy bien. Eh, pregunta. En, en cada país eh, 
de los tres, o sea, eh, Jake, si tiene alguna opinión formada sobre esto. En cada país, eh, de, en, en Argentina, en Brasil y en Paraguay, ¿cuál es el, el promedio de capital semilla inicial que, que, se, que se puede conseguir para startups? Capital semilla inicial, promedio. En, ¿Ustedes tienen alguna...? No, nosotros no tenemos programas formales de capital semilla, no tenemos eh, uh -huh. al, hoy día. Bueno, nuestro viceministerio es muy nuevo, tiene el primer año, va a cumplir el primer año de ejecución. Trabajamos con capital semilla de las hidroeléctricas de la entidad binacional de Acereta, que es con Argentina, y, y a Eiteipú binacional con Brasil. Eh, capital semilla para promedio de 40 mil dólares, que, que va a pequeños fondos a 10, 10 ganadores por, por concurso. Y esto lo, lo fuimos haciendo, estamos en la segunda, la segunda edición. Pero no existe un fondo ya destinado de presupuesto dentro del presupuesto de, de la nación, ni tampoco capital privado. Son, son este, actividades no en forma continua. ¿Está en Buenos Aires? I only understood about 70% of the Spanish from that question. Okay. Can, you, can you repeat it in English? Can you repeat the question in English? Sí. Capital seed um, in, in person. Uh, what is um, uh, the um, uh, average for, uh, invest in capital seed? Oh, I, in Sarah Buenos Aires. We don't. We don't invest. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're a community. We're not an, an investor, so I, I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. In Brazil. Well, in Brazil we have the the nation. Uh, for example, the national program, uh, Startup Brazil, we have the regional programs like SEED and Startup Rio and others are coming. We also have uh, 52 accelerators that I recently mapped um, in Brazil. Some of them are investing, others not quite uh, putting money, but they helped a lot to make the first contact with inv other investors. And we have a community of angels that are growing. And I think that's most part of the scenario. Mm -hmm. Jake, uh, you, you know about that? I, you know, we're not an investor, so I'm going <laughs> to leave it Okay. That. Okay. Well, uh, question? Question? Uh, Thank you all in English. Um, my name is Rafael from, from Brazil. Um, the question uh, is, you, you mentioned a lot of the problems that, that the, the challenges that, that we have linking investors with, with Latin America. Perhaps what would be your su solu uh, solution suggestion uh, to, to find this linkages or to improve this linkages? Are you guys already doing some kind of linkages or training with people Um, to, uh, uh, in the U.S. or Canada to learn the best practice, to learn from them, and to integrate to what you guys are doing already. Well, I mean, what basically, what are the solutions? What are you guys already planning to, to make this link? I think there is, like, uh, two levels of solutions for Latin America and even Brazil. There are the concrete levels that is related about uh, the patent rules, the taxes, the labor uh, taxes, this kind of uh, environment that has to evolve and has to uh, promote more than entrepreneurship. Uh, we have also the cultural level, the soft level of the thing. And we have to um, show entrepreneurship as an option as career for women, for example. We have to deal with our religion uh, issues that in, uh, implicates that we are a little best, a little less entrepreneurs in, in Brazil, uh, but I think the f um, this is a, a important step to be in this event discussing this kind of stuff about Latin America, so I think this is a, a, a very uh, good step for everyone that's here. And I, I will um, I would uh, start uh, following the Victoria's um, advice, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> uh, about the first step. Uh, begins from where you are, doing whatever you can do, because Latin America is here. So we are the solution. We are here. That's <laughs> it. Thank you. 
Uh, a few Is ways that, that we at Startup Buenos Aires are bridging the gap between investment and startups in, in Argentina specifically are we, we've partnered with a few pre-acceleration programs to prepare uh, entrepreneurs in Argentina to apply to the global acceleration programs. Uh, we've also partnered with an investment group in Spain where uh, we are creating a platform for local startups to pitch to um, this uh, investor group in, in Spain as well. And then another way is by bringing global pitch competitions to the city. Um, so we recently partnered up with um, 1776 in Washington, D.C., and we're bringing their Challenge Cup to Buenos Aires. Um, so it's, it's a pitch competition, and then it, it gives the, um, the startups and entrepreneurs in the city a chance to pitch in front of investors in Washington, D.C. Um, so it's really about building that bridge and providing the education and the connections from those startups to the potential investors um, all over the world. You know, I mean, I think that the future um, of connecting startups with investors is this globalization of, of the entrepreneurship movement. Um, Victoria had mentioned Startup Nations Conference and Global Entrepreneurship Week, and, and there are these um, events and touch points that bring entrepreneurs together uh, from different countries. But, uh, you know, frankly, it's, it, it can be a little bit insular. As, as someone who's, um, who doesn't, who's sort of new to the movement, um, I didn't know a lot about uh, this, uh, these events and these programs. Uh, until people like Victoria told me about them. And, and so, uh, you know, there, there's a lesson here from corporations which are, I think, uniquely effective in being able to communicate their message to broader audiences and, and getting the message out to investors. Um, uh, you need to have a communication strategy and you need to reach out beyond the startup community uh, to make sure that, that you're engaging global investors, that you're engaging larger corporations. Um, I spoke with a, a couple of, of investors who suggest that these sorts of events like the one that we're having here and, and Startup Nations is part of their secret sauce about how they um, figure out who to invest in. And so, you know, engaging them in more of these events where you bring together different national groups of entrepreneurs, I think, is really important. Okay. Thank you, Sex. Lorena? Bueno, como, como habíamos comentado, es eh, un cambio de mentalidad, generar confianza en el sistema y generar, generar todo lo que es conferencias, competencias, para que más jóvenes puedan tener oportunidad. Nuestros jóvenes necesitan sí, una buena oportunidad y generar esa confianza en el sector privado también. Está muy bien. Muy bien. ¿Last question? ¿Question? ¿No? ¿Amor? Ok, thanks.